Okay. Well, I'm glad y'all are here. So tonight we have Maria Ramos and she is a Sapphire ambassador. And I have followed this lady for years. And Maria, I just, I love your energy. And I, I just wanted everybody to have a chance to hear a little bit about your story. And y'all know my team, um, y'all know I love to just learn from other people that have been on the same journey that we're on, because there's always something new to learn and always something new to try. And we've learned a lot lately that leaders are learners. So we need to be coachable and we need to seek wisdom from those that have gone before us. So I'm proud of you guys, even though this isn't our usual night, I'm proud of y'all for being here tonight. And if you have questions uh, for Maria, just drop them in the chat and I'm sure she'll be willing to answer them. But Maria, we're just excited that you're here tonight and giving us a little bit of your time, you know, to just share your story and maybe a few tips that, that have kind of helped you along the way. So you are welcome to take it away, friend. Thank you. You guys, thank you so much for showing up tonight. You didn't have to be here. I you switched your nights around and just, I'm so grateful and honored to, to share my story. And Kendall, when you said Sapphire, it's still so surreal, you know, that we've made it to Sapphire. I'll tell you a little bit. So when I joined Plexus, I wasn't looking for the business opportunity. I think a lot of us here can relate to that. We fell in love with the product first. Um, during that time, I was on unemployment. And I don't know if any of you have been in the situation where you had to withdraw unemployment. I, I'm, I was so grateful for it. Um, my husband is a principal slash boys uh, head basketball coach. He's in small school districts, so they allow him to coach while he's an administrator. And we moved um, from our hometown. Uh, we're in Washington State in the Pacific Northwest, if you're any from you over here. And we moved to a really small town, and I left my career to follow and pursue, you know, his. But at the same time, that's how I was able to get onto unemployment. And at that time I had a one-year-old and a three-year-old, and it was so hard for me to just to phantom the idea to find childcare for them in a small town where I didn't know anybody. Like we did not know anyone there, no friends, no family. My mom had cared for my children when I worked at my previous job. And when I got this like glimpse of what it would be like to be a stay-at-home mom while I was connected, connect collecting unemployment, I was just like, I don't think I could go back to work. Like I want this, but unemployment was very, very tight. And you guys, my husband has, and still has uh, student loans. And I had credit card debt. Like when we got married, I was stressing about finances. Cause it's like how I'm bringing this in. Like I already had a big debt and credit card debt. And the, what I got in unemployment barely, barely made our minimum payments on my credit cards, like just barely. So I was surviving off of unemployment just for that. And I was still racking up more credit card debt. And um, we joined silly enough, not for me, but for him. And the thing is, when we look at ourselves and he was, he was struggling with weight and um, you guys, he had hypothyroidism. We thought that was normal. He'd been on medication for six plus years. Uh, he was sleeping with a CPAP machine. And we thought that was normal. He had horrible anxiety, the kind that he would wake up in the middle of the night and rip off his shirts. And we thought that was normal. We just like, okay, medication, medication. But when he turned up to me and said, Maria, I need to do something about my weight. I looked at our finances and I'm like, well, I can't buy supplements. And I think that's what he hensed. And I said, um, I used to do figure and bodybuilding competitions way before I got married. And I told him, just watch what you eat, like zip your mouth. Don't eat, watch what you eat and run, do cardio, like burn it off. But it's easier said than done. And he was struggling, like, you know, energy wise, he was hurting. He had so much inflammation. If I was to show you a picture and Kendall, I'll probably have to share it with you later. It'd be like night and day to what he is right now. You know, we usually look at and just think it's overweight. But that's the reason why we joined was because a triplex combo was like $109 compared to another system that he wanted, which was $400. Um, and I thought, well, you know what, we'll just put it on the credit card. Cause I thought, how is he working and not getting what he wants? Right. Sometimes we just work just to make ends meet and pay for bills. So that's how we were. We were very, very tight, um, financially. And, um, 
he started like sleeping through the night. I started becoming very curious about the pink drink and I would snack a couple of the envelopes from his stash. And I was like, whoa, this stuff is amazing. Like I had some health issues myself and I didn't even think about that. But then I started to post. And one of the things that I posted was, holy moly, like, is this what it's like to feel, to sleep through the night? And cause I, always tossed and turned, you know, just finances and worry kept me up at night and just tossed and turned. If you relate to that, I mean, that's what kept me up finding the worry of where I was going to work. Um, maybe even declaring bankruptcy, bankruptcy, just with off with all the credit card debt. And then who was going to take care of our babies. And the first night, the, actually I'd say like the first three days of slim, I started sleeping through the night and I posted just like silly. I thought it was just a silly post. I thought, you know, nothing come out of it, but holy moly, I slept through the night. And I think I slept like a log. I didn't even move. That's what I posted. And people related like, Maria, what are you on? Maria, send me a message. I need what you're taking. That little post uh, had people buy the triplex. And then we found out, you know, that slim helps with diabetes. My mom was diabetic, you guys. And here I had something that I could help her. So again, I did what I knew and I put it on a credit card and shipped her a bag of slim. And within seven days, you guys, I'm not kidding you not seven days, her blood sugars cut in half, like from 240 to 120, 89, 109. And she was freaking out because her blood sugars have never been that low. We lost my dad to diabetes. And here I am having something in my hand that I could help people with, you know, balancing blood sugars. And it seems so simple, but I didn't know like how, well, my mom started sharing that her blood sugars had, were low and, you know, word of mouth just travels because everybody knew that we were the diabetic family. My parents were diabetic. And so all these referrals kept going through and my husband, you know, people started seeing him different at school. And I got a check. I got a $120 check. And I was like, whoa, where's this money coming from? We had the, the OG checks from back in the day that came in the mail. And I told him, I don't think I need to um, cash this. I'm just going to let it sit there. And I did. I let it sit there. I didn't even cash it because if you're on unemployment, you have to claim every income that comes in and it counts against you. And remember, I was relying on unemployment to be home with my babies. I'm telling you the story because it, you know, it just kind of progresses. The next month, that check tripled. No, no, no. Sorry. It went up to $500 more than tripled. And I was just like blown away. And that's just like, okay, is this like, I have to pay this money back. I don't know where it's coming from, but then it intrigued me and it hit me. And I'm like, wait a minute. I think, you know, we can make a thousand dollars here. You guys, I was making $1,200 and I still have these here from my unemployment because it reminds me how far we've come. Actually, look, 321, 2015. And my paycheck was, okay, where is it? $320. That must've been a weekly check or something. And I keep these here because a curiosity peaked in. I said, if I can make $1,200 on this or, or a thousand dollars, then I can shut off my unemployment or I can, you know, till it runs out or whatever. And I've got this like figured out so I can be home with my babies. And so I called my friend, Jen, and I said, Jen, can I make a thousand dollars on this? Because I didn't know, I personally did not know anyone that was successful in direct sales, social selling, network marketing, whatever you want to call it. I didn't know anybody that was successful. And she said, oh yeah, absolutely. And she told me how much she was making. She was senior gold at the time. And she was making over $2,000 a month. And I was like, whoa, like 2000 a month was just like mind blowing, you know, to from home. And so she told me, take your products consistently, share what they're doing with others. Like, and for me, we moved into a small town, about 1300 people didn't know anyone. There was no stoplights there. It rained, it poured. I was like, I didn't even want to leave my house. So for me it was posting on social media. And, and then she said, follow up with those that ask you about it or those that you present it to. I'm like, that's it. Three steps. I'm like, I'm going to prove her wrong. Like this is not going to happen. And this was in the summer of 2015. They announced leaders retreat and how you can earn this trip. I was all about traveling prior to getting be married. And that's how I racked up a lot of debt on my credit cards. I'm like a free trip. Are you kidding me? I was like, I'm going to earn this. Like I want to travel and I want to go for it. Well, pushing for leaders retreat. I got to silver and then barely, like barely like made leaders retreat. And I had to like write down every customer, every order and everything, because at the time we didn't even have trackers and I barely squeezed by. And 
that just made me realize like, wow, we've got something bigger. Like I thought I was just in my neck of the woods over, woods over here in the Northwest, just like sharing pink drink and triplex. And then I go to this big event and I'm like, wow, this is like bigger than my own head. Like I'm a part of something very big. And I don't even realize what I was getting into, what I was doing in this big part of the community that I was going into. And I was like, it just opened eyes and people saw that I earned this trip and they're like, okay, what are you doing, Maria? Like you've totally changed. You're, you're more energetic. You're doing these things from home and you're, you didn't go back to work. You guys, I did cancel my unemployment. I didn't have to go back to work because that thousand dollars supplemented what I was looking for. And then that summer, sorry, that fall, they had a really fun incentive and I got myself to gold just by simply recruiting because my thing was I wanted to bring an income. I wanted to pay for my own credit card debt and I wanted to be home with my babies. But here's the thing. We got into January and I'm telling you this right now because we're in the season right now. We, we got to gold in December. So it took me like a whole six months to get to gold. A lot of time. I didn't see it right away. People are ranking to gold faster than I ever did. And then senior gold in January, because we're in this wave of like momentum and you start creating it right now when you share and you tell others about it. And then they start to share and tell others about other, tell others about it. And then we we're in January where people want to change their lifestyle, their habits. They want to get back into recommitting to themselves, like fitness goals. I don't know, but every January I was always killing myself in the gym. And I was always taking, like watching what to do next. I need a challenge. I need that. That's what people are looking for. So remind yourself, like, what did you do prior to Plexus in January? And so we drove upon that where we were just like signing people up because they had goals and they were seeing amazing results. And then it just tripled because, or rippled because they were sharing that too. So January, February, March, April, May, and June, it's just like goes onward, but you got to do the work. You got to share, you got to show with, show up and do like, if it's zooms or presentations or, you know, showing people, inviting them to just take a look. Um, and then summer is right around the corner. So this is like our going up season right now. Every business has ebbs and flows right now is our up season. And so that's took our business all the way to senior Ruby. And I was just like, how did I get here so fast? Um, but it was just, we all had the same vision of getting there. Then I got stuck at senior Ruby for about two years. And I was like, okay, what's going on here? Right? Like it's not going as fast as it was before, you know, summers are slow, you know, summers, people start going on vacations, you know, there's prom and there's everything, but it's up to you because if you get new people, it's new to their network. So I think that's just the thought that we have in our mind. So you can create um, momentum any time of the year, round around the, the, the year. But let me tell you, I got stuck in my own mindset and thinking, okay, it, it's going to be easy from here on out. And it didn't, I stopped doing all the work that I did from the very beginning. And so I had to like recheck my, recheck myself. And then remember that why I was doing this and I met my first goal to bring a thousand dollars in, to be home with my babies, to be a stay at home mom, to not put them through childcare. That's my, that was my first two goals. And then I thought, what if I move my family back to Yakima to our hometown? Then curiosity picked in and like, why not? Why not? We moved about four hours away. We're back in Yakima, but let me tell you, all this is because of Plexus. My husband's a principal. He made really good money. He still makes really good money as a school administrator. And I talked to him about seeking for a job over here in Yakima and he's like, well, we don't have any place to live and we don't even have a down payment for a house or anything. And I'm like, okay, that stuck on me. You guys, I didn't believe, I didn't trust myself with money because as you know, I had racked up so much credit card, but the thing is, I'm like, well, what if I start saving money? Like I, you know, and I did, I didn't, I barely paid myself the minimum to pay off my credit card debt, which I paid it off. And I would only pay myself like a small percentage and keep the rest in pay portal because I didn't trust myself with money. I had racked up a lot of money on my pay portal and it just sat there because I was so afraid that if I moved it to our bank, that I was just going to spend it, waste it. And then I had nothing to do with, it. you know, I just didn't show any of it. So it sat there. And when the moment came, you guys, we, yeah, we did rank up to Emerald in May of 2017 when the new Slim came out and everybody just went like, oh my gosh, this is phenomenal. It's the most amazing thing. Um, but I, my goal was to buy a house. And I, I'm going to tell you this, not from bragging, but 
what is possible in your business. I wanted to move back home so bad that I just kept that money in there. You guys had saved over $45,000 in my pay portal, just there because I didn't trust myself with money. So when I, and I have sweaty pits right now, when I told my husband, I, cause that's very like, you know, but I told my husband, I showed him a screenshot of what was in my pay portal. I said, do you think this is enough to buy a house? Like, I don't even, I've never bought a house before he had, but, uh, and he said, Holy, wh wh where is this from? What is, I'm like, what's my savings? I didn't pay myself. I just let it sit there and sit there. I think I need to do something with it because, you know, I knew there's interest and you can earn interest on money, but I'm not wise with money. You guys, I never trusted myself with money. So that made him reconsider and thinking, yeah, that's definitely a down payment on a house or something. So then we started looking into moving back. And because of that opportunity, he saw that what we were doing in a tiny town of 1300 people, we grew a business to Emerald in two years in there. And he saw, well, if we move into a bigger city, Yakima is a bigger city. We moved here because of the opportunity with Plexus to branch out, to get to know more people. This is where we're from. My mom lives here. My family lives here. They could help with the kids. And so then guess what happened? I plateaued. Again, we moved to Yakima, bought the house, did all the things, renovated the things. And then I was happy. I became comfort again. And I think all of us become, you know, to a moment we're like, okay, I did the thing. I'm happy now, but guess what? It's not about us. And I realized that when I stopped thinking about our team, when I started thinking just about me, like, okay, I've got what I want. I stopped growing. And then I started to reanalyze like, well, what is, what does my team need? we needed to see rank ups. We hadn't had gold rank ups in a long time. All we had were silver, which is great. Don't get me wrong, but we couldn't get past silver because we didn't have that vision. So in 2020, I was doing, uh, I was working with Brooke. I don't know if how many of you know, Brooke Kendall, you know her. And she showed me back again, like how to work hard and how to work intentionally and how to get others to share the vision that you have. And, um, and how, when you get out of your head, when I got out of my head, I could push others on my team to re-rank and help them reach their goals. Cause it's no longer my goals. You know, my goal was like move to Yakima and then I was done and bought, we bought our house and everything, but what about my team's goals? So that was a big lesson learned. And I talked to each one individually and we asked, reconsidered again, like their why, why they're doing this, what are their goals? And we did all the things like your why, and then just reshifting our mindset and our focus in our vision. And we thought, you know what, why not just like go for Sapphire in my head? I'm thinking, why not go for Sapphire? Because when I, if we do push that big goal and often a lot of us are scared to push for a big goal because we think it's about us. I was so scared to tell my team, okay, we're going for Sapphire. We're going for Sapphire. Like this is the month I feel it. You guys, I had a long ways to go for Sapphire, like 1100 points. And we ended May with 1900 and in June. If we wanted to hit Sapphire in June, we had to jump up 1100 points. That's like almost impossible. Like that was just like, no. But when I started talking to my senior Ruby, my Ruby about going Ruby, when I started talking to my gold about going senior gold, when I talked to my seniors, my senior silvers about going gold, and you started like mapping and talking to them about what's possible for them and how they can bless others. And, you know, Brooke said this one time and it stuck to my head. I think sometimes we get so close in our head that we don't, we stop for whatever reason, because we think it's for us, but the more you share, you're getting products in more people's health, you know, in their hands where they're going to start to feel better. They're going to sleep through the night. They're possibly going to be off medication. My husband is off his thyroid medication within that same year. You guys, uh, he does, he no longer sleeps with a CPAP machine within that same year. He no more anxiety, no more PTSD all happened in within like three to five, three to six months. And so when you start thinking of these things, you're like, it's not about me. It's not about my goal. It's about helping people through their health and also their finances. Because when you share and when you push your, your team and encourage them, they're going to get a bigger check, right? They are going to have groceries on their table. They're going to pay for extracurricular activities for their kids. It's like, get out of our own head because when that happens, growth happens, right? And we all have to do this together. It's uncomfortable, but we, if we do it together, we know we're in, in it together. And so we did, I, but let me tell you what happened. We hit June 28th and we still needed 700 points, like 733 points. And we were cut short. 
we were cut short. We were working hard to get to Sapphire, people getting to silver, you know, the, the power of three, getting to gold and everybody did their work, but we were short 700 points and we had three days left in the month. I'm like, yeah, it's not going to happen. So what do you do as a leader? And I'm going to tell you where I was at that point. Um, my family is from this beautiful town in Mexico, beautiful, beautiful town, but I get the ibby jibbies going there because you fly into this big airport in central Mexico, which is Guadalajara, and then you have to drive like an hour and 45 minutes through this really, really, really windy road, and it's just the one way, you know, like two ways, one way. It's not like a freeway or anything. And when I was little, I just remember there was a lot of accidents that would happen. Buses would flip because there's just like a big downhill Um and it would just scare me. Once we get to Florencia, it was like, oh, you know, it's just so beautiful. I don't want to leave. And then, so I felt like I was the driver of that bus. And maybe you feel like you're the driver of the bus for your team. And you're like, and I told my team, I actually sent them audios in our chat. I said, I feel like I'm this driver of this bus and you're all on this bus because we're all in this together. And it's like me to decide whether we go or stay here because if we stay here, we're all comfortable, right? Nothing's going to happen. We're just like safe. And I told them about the windy road. Like there's risk going down the windy road. Cause what if we don't make it? What if our bus tips over and we just don't make it? We fall short of points and you know, but what if we like punch and we just go for it and we do make it like, what if you'll never know unless you try. And they said, oh, that's my kid. They said, Maria, punch it. We're going for you. We're going on this ride with you. And when they said that we turned every, every stone, every conversation, every person in our back office, we did plus one, we reached out and they we did the uncomfortable thing. We did the thing, but we had all a vision of where we were headed. We all wanted to go to Florencia, you know, that's my parents' hometown. And they painted it. I painted that vision to them crystal clear of where we were headed for our team. It was 3000 points Sapphire, but in my mind, it was just like that fear of going, but then knowing, you know, what is there. And that is more, bit more checks, more people, you know, having, um, better health, getting off medications, living better, striving better, making better decisions for their family, showing up and being them. And we freaking made it. But let me tell you, it wasn't easy. And you have to decide whether you're going to make it or not. You have that thought in your head, whether you want to hit the next rank or you want to grow hundred points, 50 points, whatever that is, a bigger amount on your paycheck. It's all up to you to decide. It's up to you. You have one choice and we can live in fear and then live like, oh, I wonder what it would look like. I wonder what, you know? And so I just want to encourage you to step outside of your comfort zone and to, if you have a team, whether it's one person on your team or two people on your team, show them what you're doing this for, show them why, show them your vision, because people will go with you if they know why you're doing this. You don't have to be at a certain rank to talk about the opportunity. You can tell them what you're doing this for, right? My people, my team knew that I wanted to like, they knew I was not the happiest when we lived in South Bend, they knew that, you know, I wanted to come back home because I would drive four hours every weekend to come see my mom one way, four hours to, to go back with little ones in the car. And they knew, and then we got stuck again, you know? So if you get stuck, it's okay. You have the power to get out of it because you know what you want. And so the best way to get out of anything, is just through action, start showing up start posting, start sharing your journey, why you're doing it. And if you've been doing this for a while, like I have, I'm going into my seventh month. I think we've tend to forget why we do the things and people just assume like, oh, you know, she's always been like that, or she's been doing this for so long. Go back to why you started, you know? And if it was, you wanted better sleep, you wanted more energy, what it was like before you started Plexus, because I think we forget to go back to where we started and then people don't relate to us anymore right now. And I've had that realization right now. We're like, oh, people don't relate to me right now. You know, I don't have cravings anymore. I sleep through the night. I'm not posting about those things. So I need to go back to the Maria that was before Plexus because that's where people relate and that's where people are struggling. And that's down with the basics. One of the th reasons that I absolutely love these products is yes, they do help with weight loss, but I tell people like, ask me, like I ask them questions. Like, if they tell me they want weight loss, I, I ask them these questions. Tell me how are you sleeping through the night? Cause I wasn't sleeping through the night. Okay. I had battled with weight my whole life, but here's the thing. 
I wasn't sleeping through the night. So then I always ask them, how are you sleeping? What's your energy like? Do you have any cravings that sabotage your goals? Are you on medication? Do you have hormone imbalance? Do you have any tummy troubles or issues going to the bathroom? Those are just like six things that come to my mind and there's more. And so when they answer these questions, it gives me an idea what their struggle is with weight gain or weight imbalance or whatever you want to call it. If they're not sleeping through the night, chances are they're very tired in the morning, right? <laughs> that was me. I had horrible brain fog. I depended and I was like constantly on the coffee machine, coffee machine, and I would have gazillions of cups of coffee a day, which made me grouchy, made me just irritable, made, gave me anxiety. And then I had horrible tummy issues like bloating and all the things. And we thought that was normal. And then cravings, you guys, after Valentine's day, I, you would find me at target in the clearance aisle, buying all the candy, especially after uh, Thanksgiving, not Thanksgiving, but uh, Halloween and Christmas. I was buying all the discounted candy and then stocking up on it. And I would eat it because I thought that candy had zero fat. I was more concerned about the fat than the sugar. I didn't know how sugar was affecting me because, you know, unused sugar converts into glucose. And if you're not burning it, it converts into fat. That's just your body's way of storing energy. And so I was really eating more fat and doing myself more damage than also with a, you know, family history of diabetes. I mean, then just the list goes on. So when you get these root issues under control, Nat weight loss naturally happens. And I love that because people won't battle with these things. When you start sleeping through the night, you feel amazing. You show up better. You have the energy the next day. You don't have the brain fog. So anyway, got lost on that, but, um, we literally have what people need. And especially right now, like people are looking for ways to boost their immune health and people are looking for a way to bring an income from home. And so you serve both of those. And you also bring in an amazing community that you have with your team to bring people in. So I just want to encourage you, you know, like what's stopping you from greatness because the only person stopping us literally is ourselves. And it's just the thought that we have here. So we need to get that thought out of there and really dig into what you want and bring others with you and share that vision with them because there's nothing wrong with you pushing for a goal. It's not about you. It's about who you bring along with you on the journey, just like we were on that bus. I love it. So I have a whole page of notes. Y'all know I love taking notes. Um, oh. I mean, just so many great takeaways. Like, I mean, the big one for me on my journey too is don't stop doing the work. Like even when you feel discouraged or you feel stuck, like I hate the word, the word stuck, but it's true, right? Like we feel stuck. And so it discourages us. It is a, it's a thought, it's a mindset thing. And so we stop showing up and then it's like that vicious cycle of, well, why are we stuck? Well, we're not showing up, but we're not showing up because we're stuck and we're discouraged. And, um, so I love that one. And then also the remembering your why, but like when you, sometimes your initial why is not your big why, like for you, it was the thousand dollars a month to be home. But like, when you hit that, you didn't know what you were, why you were doing it. Right. And so recognizing your why changes over time and always trying to like plug into that and tune into what is your motivation for showing up every day. Um, and then I love when you said, like focusing on what does your team need? Because it, our goal, like we have goals. It's not selfish to have a goal and to push for something for yourself. If you are thinking of, well, this is a team journey. Like what is my team need? What are they going to get out of this? If we all push toward this together and 700 points in three days is pretty insane. I can only imagine you probably got like one hour of sleep a night or something. <laughs> I mean, that's insane. So, but that's amazing. And it's, it just demonstrates what can happen. Like when you, you know what, when you divvy the load, it's yeah. not on you, you know, it's, it can be done. There's yes. no, like no stopping you 700 points. We think that it's on us, but when you have people like you, your team, you have your people on your team and you have people that you have yet to share and share this opportunity with you're bringing them along. And so that whole load is not on just on you. It's yeah. everybody together. And that's what I wrote next to it. 700 points in three days. And I wrote how it's casting belief, vision, and unity. Mm -hmm. Like unifying everyone through what do we believe with this? Do we believe these products work? Do we believe people need financial freedom? Do we truly believe in what we're offering? I'm sorry, I have a gnat trying to jump in my mouth while I'm talking. Um, but then are we casting that vision? Like, 
are we talking about it? Because so often, even if we know it, we're afraid of what other people are going to think of us. So we don't share it. We don't cast that vision to other people. And that I realized it was kind of the same as you. I hit a certain point in my business and I realized I was stuck, but I stopped doing all the things that got me to where I was. I stopped talking about the opportunity. I stopped trying to develop leaders because I was like, oh, I have leaders. Great. They're going to help me do this. And then I stopped continuing to cast the vision for other people who needed it. Oh my right. right. Yes. Helping others rise up. So I love it. Um, so one quick question for you, can you just share like for those on here who aren't quite to that level, who maybe are silver or senior silver or gold or senior gold, like in that phase of your business, um, like just kind of what did your daily work look like? What did your daily IPAs look like? I know it's different now as a sapphire, but like just in that building phase, what are the things that you encourage your people who are in that phase to do? Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, one of the things that grew my belief was reading testimonies. If you have a testimony take a page, just allow yourself to get lost in there and just scroll and read testimonies because I, I had a lot of time on my hand. You guys, I was, I was home with babies and I cleaned the house and I, I didn't have any social life. <laughs> I didn't have anything. I just had Facebook. I would go and read these things. I'm like, Oh my gosh, it helps with this. And I was just blown away. And I'm like, Oh, it helps with that. And so naturally in my mind, I would think of so-and-so and I, you know, now looking back, my faith is just like, Oh, I get goosebumps. I get just like, it was God telling me share with this person you know, and back then I was just like, oh, it could help so-and-so it could help so-and-so. And so I was reading a testimony. I'm like, da, 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 da. a name would come to mind. Now, looking back in my faith growing, it's just like, God was giving me that name to go help them and to reach out to them. So I literally dove myself in testimonies. And if you have, if you're just beginning or you have someone that is just starting with you testimonies, build your belief. And then these names, I kid you not, I would go to bed with a notepad next to my it, and you, this is something I need to do again. See, you're, thank you. You're challenging me. But, um, and I would, I would just think of people like people like would just come into my mind. So write them down. If they come to your mind, that's, that's a purpose. And so write them down and then just later figure out how you're going to reach out to them. You don't have to have it all mapped out. How are you going to, what you're going to say or what, you know, how are you going to show it to them? Whether it's a phone call or video or three-way message, you don't know that, but just write their name down. It will come to you later. And then, um, so during the day, I, of course, you know, make my pink drink. And then I did a lot of selfies, you know, cause you're, you're, you're sharing your journey. And, and I would take pictures of my pro bio five, my bio cleanse. We didn't have Facebook live before then. Um, I was challenged by my upline to do a video of, to why, you know, why I was, why I chose plexus or something like that. Why, you know, kind of like sharing my why, and we didn't have Facebook live before you guys, it took me a thousand, not a thousand, a hundred takes to make that video. Perfect. And I still have it in there. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, thank goodness. You know, because we wanted it to be perfect, but, um, sharing your story, just constantly share your story. I think we often lose ourselves. Like I don't have nothing to share. Yeah, you do. Remember all the things that have changed and just make a post about that. I remember when X, Y, and Z go back to those moments. And so, um, a lot of it is also checking the team pages. I took myself out of a couple team pages in the beginning. They put me in all these pages and I took myself out because I didn't want the business. But one thing that intrigued me, you guys, I, I will tell you is the shout outs on team pages. There was shout outs for people that had like 500 PV or, you know, or went silver or had X amount of PV. And I'm like, how are they getting, I wanted recognition. I wanted to belong to something. And I, I strive for that recognition. And I told myself one day, my name's going to be on that list. And it's something so simple, but if you have someone on your team that you need to recognize or just uplift or just bring them up, you know, on the table, mention their name, do it and tag them because that right there can just switch, turn on that light switch for them. Um, and so, yeah, I would just follow up. I do phone calls. A lot of it was on phone calls. Uh, a lot of it was three-way messages and a lot of it was also events. We didn't have all the systems, all the, you know, tools that we have now. We have amazing videos through corporate. We didn't have those before. I would watch a lot of Melissa Eichenhorst videos, Tara Castaneda videos, um, like how to get to gold. Oh my gosh. Tara's Castaneda's. And then um, who's your number 76 with Melissa Eichenhorst is another great one. And so I would just watch these videos and 
I'm like, man, and I would take notes, 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 notes. And if something came, I'm very visual. So in here, if I have a lot of stickies on my wall is I went back to visuals, you know, cause I, I was working find a place that works for you where you have your own assigned area. Cause lately I've been working from the kitchen counter, the kitchen table. So I clean my desk again. We have an outdoor office and I don't want to go over there because my kids are a little still and they're all around here. And I don't want to just go close the door over there. So I usually just see here, um, but have an area where you can just have crystal clear of like what you're working on and who you're helping. So yeah, it was very minimal. I would say probably two to three hours, uh, when it got really serious was, um, I mean, not to say serious, but when, you know, starting working more with um, leaders was like from senior gold and above. And that's when uh, locking arms with them, doing more one-on-ones. We did a lot of uh, in-person events. And my goal was in January, I had a, a, a runner join me in December when I first hit uh, gold and I told her, okay, Kelly, we're locking arms and this is what we're going to do. So we promised and we put on, we got together our calendars and we wrote down an opportunity meeting or, uh, I don't know, just like a live event, in-person event once a month. So I would drive back to Yakima and we would hosted those. And so our goal was to outgrow the space. And we did. So we started out with a very small space that we rented in a coffee shop. And then we moved up to the bigger one. And then the next month we're like, okay, but we were telling people next time bring three to five people. And so we grew and we grew and we grew. So I think having a system also that you have and follow, and you guys, it doesn't have to be, you know, anything like, you know, da, 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 da. You have a system and I'm, you know, Kendall has an amazing system. Follow it. The simple, it's just easier. We were just bringing people to the table. That's it. And ha having them take a look. Yeah, I love it. And what you, what you say makes me think of, well, initially I did actually in-person events and y'all know I hate public speaking. I've told my team, I literally spent the morning in the bathroom the entire day with stomach aches because I had to speak publicly, but just it's sharing our journey. And it, and it makes me think of what Brooke has said multiple times. And most of us here went to Align, went to the Align conference. So they know Brooke, um, but she talks about simple systems and keeping it simple. And I really always just focus on the simple system. She said, a uh, post, share your story, put your journey out there. Even though I love, I wrote it down. I remember when, like, even if you're in your, you know, you're past the beginning, like I remember when, right. And tell your story, supposed have conversations, get that, that, you know, ball rolling with people that you're thinking of that God brings to mind of the testimonies you're reading and then follow up with them. Have that, you know, maybe it's not the first time you talk to them, but have that conversation over and over and then just repeat it. That's it. It's like literally post conversations, follow up, repeat. And that's what I focus on when I get overwhelmed and I think I can't do this. It's too complicated. It's really not. You just bring it yeah. back to the basics of just, why are you doing this? Share about it, have those conversations and follow up with those people. And that's mm -hmm. all you have to do to have success and cast that vision to those that come alongside you. So Maria, we're so thankful for you. I really Thank appreciate you. it, girl. And I'm glad that you were a little flexible and then that you guys that were able to join us tonight were yeah. flexible on the evening. Um, but I will see you in Brooks next week. So that's- Oh exciting. my gosh. Yes. See you next week. And yes. thank you for, thank you for your time. Thank you for showing up. You know, when you, I can tell you guys have bright futures because you showed up and those that show up, I mean, truly go up. You're eager to learn, go watch videos, but also don't forget to what you ingest to take out and apply it in your business and to share with others. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, guys. Thank you. I'll see y'all later. Thank you. Bye. Bye.